it's going to be offered by the Chen as well. It means that uh, even with a support pickoff in that mid game, that they're going to be able to take towers. And yeah, and you don't have like the traditional saving heroes, but you still got okay save between the Chen heal as well as the nightmare save. Um, that one second can be key. Ten seconds yep. remaining. And secret not not showing just a not showing a huge Five amount of burst damage remaining. in their first three, although the potential is certainly there still. They probably don't pick it up now. You right? know what? You leave it for fourth or fifth. The only thing that worries me... All right, I'm going to go back on that a little bit. The only yeah. thing that will worry me, worry me about a DP pick here is that there are a lot of heroes in that traditional set that are amped up by Magnus that offer burst physical damage, and that's mm -hmm. something that DP really, really doesn't like. Yeah. How about a jug? Yeah, that's what I. That's one of the two I mentioned, <laughs> PA. Yeah. Sand King. This is not a hero that we've seen a lot of from VP. It looks like it's going to be the offlaner in this position. Yeah, why Sand King over, say, uh, Batrider? I'm just trying to work that out. Initiator. It offers you better team fight opportunity, just better damage, something that neither one of your uh, supports remaining. does a whole lot of. So I think I co that covers that gap a little yeah. bit. Five seconds I just worry that the, with the nerf to low level caustic, that hero's laning is potential is just Turn so down. nerfed from before. Uh, we are, okay. Yeah. So that's the other thing, because I mentioned it earlier in the draft, I wasn't as focused on it after the Magnus pick, but Ember, of course, does benefit from that in power, and that's just a, a mid-one staple. Oh, yeah. uh, 43, I believe 43 and 12 all-time, the most Ten wins on that hero in Pro Dota 2 history. Makes the DP stronger. If DP want to go that route. Okay. Makes uh, a couple of melee options as well. All right. Viper, okay. And yeah, that's that's going to be a no one Viper, and he is one of the scarier players on that hero in the world. Uh, Viper, ordinarily, a a hero you think about as just sort of five manning around, death balling, pushing towers, but the way that no one plays it is very aggressive, and remaining. that hero turns into a uh, uh, high kill potential five in the hands of no one. Remaining. Yeah, you, you're pretty much like guaranteed the team secret because Ember Spirit isn't the Magnus combination that you really want, right? He's more magic focused. He's not going like Battle Fury physical damage build most of the time. So you're pretty much guaranteed that you're going to get another physical damage healer, a hero that's amplified by Magnus that's going to be melee. So Viper is both the counter to Ember Spirit and that hidden pick. Yeah, and, and in fact, when you think about it with... Uh... With the Nether Toxin passive, Viper is a burst physical damage dealer in his own right against the Ember Spirit. I like these first four picks from BP. Secret pressure is on them to give a little protection for the Ember. I think you, you, you need to pick something relatively self-sufficient here for Ace. Looking at maybe, looking at maybe a Timber Saw? Uh, it's got to be the... I think you still have to go uh, with a Magnus hero, right? The Empowered mm. hero. I, I, I don't know. I mean, are you counting on... It? The question is how much are you counting on the Empower for the Ember Spirit? I mean, I think Magnus just looks like a, a bad core for you if you don't have that. Yeah. All right, so we're back to back to PA and Jug fifth potentially for secret. <laughs> Unless this is all misdirection for the yeah. surprise meepo. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> could be. Five seconds remaining. Was the one I was going to bring up. It's funny. It makes a certain kind of sense. None of the classic meepo Rose, counters fit very well as fifth Ooh. reverse pro. Okay. I do have last pick, of course, as well worst possible place to put it. Right now we're waiting, waiting for Virtus Pro's fifth. But... Mm. Uh, how good is Life Stealer here? Yeah, Life Stealer is the one I think about. Yeah, it's like Ember Spirit still a problem though. I'd rather have a hero that provides its own disable. Sven? Yeah, mm. no. Um, mm. Maybe like a uh, I mean, I just, I see a melee core here. BP could, I mean, could take the dragon. Okay, no, 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 no. All right, this makes sense. They're going to go back to that Venge that worked so well for them in the last game. Um, they're going to put a lot of pressure on the Ember Spirit to come online and whatever hero is going to be enabled by the Magnus here. I, I, I like that pick. It wasn't what I expected. I think it's a little, I think the Venge is a little bit less good here than it was in the last game. Five seconds remaining. 
They need a hero that comes online fast. Yeah, they really or do. A secret. A monkey or something. Yeah, it's, it. Uh, you, you. Okay. Oh, these oh, heroes are cool. look great awesome. against the uh, Viper. Yeah, but the tempo concerns me. Exactly what you just said, Cap. Uh, PL, not a hero that wants to get two items and fight like the Vengeful Spirit. Uh, there's going to come a point in this game where Virtus Pro is going to be running at your towers at 15 minutes. And if you've not had a solid early game, uh, you're just not going to be ready to fight as secret. VP don't have a whole lot of wave clear, though. Uh, yeah. I can see where this is coming from, right? They needed wave clear on um, secret. They needed a hero that would be able to push out lanes. All right, very okay. quickly, in one word. BP. BP. Okay. Our gents on the panel have decided that Virtus Pro are about to be crowned the champions of ESL1 Hamburg and claim their first ever major, but that's not how it happens. They have to go out there and beat Team Secret. Who's up for it? The winner gets $500,000. There's also an MVP on the line as well. Let's sit to game number two. Game two of Virtus Pro versus Team Secret. We'll see if Virtus Pro can claim that title they've always wanted and Team Secret have claimed once before. Sint, how do you feel it's going to go? The panel was very excited towards Virtus Pro after the draft. Are you with them? Are you saying this will be an early night for us? I think it's a similar situation. Not exactly the same as in the Liquid series against Secret where they were facing the mag or... You look at them and it's you see this lineup that has a lot of potential to pressure early on but then if they don't manage to do it then there's two melee cores with empower later that will farm and overtake them i think it's similar if secret can stay alive long enough this phantom lancer has like very limited counters in the game it's yeah a sand king let's be real here it's a sand king he's facing so um great pl game but they need to get there and i think vp's aggression in game number one was just really well executed. I think they have been more polished in their early game than uh, Team Liquid were, which is also why Liquid didn't manage to build a big advantage in that game. So, but it know. also looks like that like the Team Secret draft, which we've seen them previously, just being able to hold on, get to that late game, and then there is, as you that said, is... like no answer to it. If VP have another one of those shrine fights, could we be going straight back down the same road? That is very true. Um... Looking at VP, they're going to have some good lane matchups, though, and that's always something we need to look out for. Viper beats any of Secret's cores in mid. They might choose in this game to just not put the Ember there because they feel like he's going to get shut down way too hard and that he is the key hero, so they put it in the safe lane instead. When they did that against Liquid with their Ember, it did not turn out very well. He got destroyed in the safe lane as well. And he's playing against a Chen, so, and a Bane support. Like These two heroes can just come to the safe lane and kill him there as well. It's not an easy game to be mid one in. Looks like he will be playing the mid lane this time around, though. Yeah, uh, he's, he's going to be more standard. I think Team Secret are also going to be very happy unless they change their mind for the next 35 seconds to not check the Radiant Rune or aggressively you... invade the VP jungle, something which they were setting up to try and get a counter gank onto Secret for. If you put me on the spot, I would pick VP to win this game because I think they their lineup can play it fast enough if they execute it well. But at the same time, a couple of slip-ups and this game will be out of control. So we're expecting very high level of execution from them or this will not work. They've drafted themselves into this. They know what they're getting themselves into. So. Oh. Team Secret are going to come for that rune eventually. And uh, underneath the observe ward, Virtus Pro understand they're not going to be able to contest for this. And SK, a bar strike might help them at least get a... Okay, they will in fact get that. A two for two bounty rune trade-off. And mid one Wait, is headed is in the off lane. On yeah, that's an ember in the ember? south. Okay. So and they're pushing the PL to the mid. It's it's not a PL versus Bat Rider this time around. It's a PL versus a Viper. So I like to say in this patch that uh, compared to previous patches, it's a lot more about lane matchups than the lane itself. Uh, for the most part, like there's more experience, there's more golden mid, which is really important for the heroes there, obviously. But if your matchup is unplayable, you're going to get more by playing this Ember in the off lane and helping him there. The thing is, I don't know if Ember is favored in any of the three lanes. VP are just going to run at him with this Bane and he's going to struggle. They will have to help him with supports. And there's a Chen that can connect over as well at any given time. So 
You know, we talked about safe lane Ember having weaknesses. In the off lane, it's even worse. If you can't even pull, yeah. then he's going to get very low levels, splitting it with these two supports of his. Well, Puppy and Yaps are down there. It was the question mark which was also flagged in game one, which is just that presence that can come from the two supports of Team Secret. And moving underneath that Observer Wall that Virtus Pro planted very early on, it makes it too easy for Virtus Pro just to react. And you've got an army behind you. It's the Chen army this time around as opposed to the Enchantress army, making life very, very difficult. And I'm wondering just how much work Puppy and Yapsaw can do. It seems a little bit easier this time around because you do have that instant just disable that comes from things like Telekinesis or the Fade Bolt control as opposed to what Mirana was offering in the previous game. But I just, I, it still seems like the same problem for Puppy. I don't like this laning from Seeker. I don't think they can stay like this. They are going to have to do something about it. Ember Spirit will get shut down way too hard. He's going to charge mid. There will be a Lance coming out from East here more than oh, likely. Oh, he's actually got Phantom Rush to close the distance. Decent harass. He, I believe no one will be just fine, though. And this is the beginning of the rotation for Puppy. This is a connection move where he wants to get to top. He's Spirit Breaker. He can quickly get to the mid and then go from there, get a rune. He got, oh, we got a haste rune. This could... Spell trouble top. He doesn't have mana for charge. I oh. can at least get the bounty rune. That's the minimum thing. He can get you both those bounty do... runes and then potentially charge. Mid one is really good on this Ember, but he will be tested in this game. They're he... actually going to leave him solo in the off lane for now. He's got he's two zero on his CS. Come on, like he's level one and level one. So being zoned out by solo, a player which, as the panel was saying, like really that you want to put him up as MVP, really been on the money as a support. And very rarely do you actually get a large portion of the community and the panel voting for that support player. But Poppy's still Hanging looking for the opening. Like, he's leeching. <laughs> he is flat out a position three Ember right now. And this, like oh, I and said, they get the pull. this can't stay. Like, this makes no sense for me. Um, it's, it's just not worth what they are getting. They're getting good farm mid on the PL, and the Magnus is having a good time as well. But I think Ember is the integral here in their lineup in order to buy them enough time oh. to sustain against this VP lineup. Well, is it though? Like, you can think about Team Secrets way back into, like, well, I say way back into the game, the way where they control the game. Doesn't it come off the back of an escalated Magnus by having his Arcanes as well as Blink Dagger up and running? It's so good, but are, you in, it? are you investing to get that first and then? giving the space for Ember to play catch-up? I mean, they might have to do it. If they feel like the Ember can't go to any other lane either, like the, the mid matchup is bad. The Sanking matchup is also not good, so he may just be forced to just have a bad lane. They could, if they wanted to, he would have a better lane. That's my point. Like, if they put him mid against Viper, he would have a better time than this. If they put him safe lane against the Sanking, he would also have had a better time than this. So it must be in Secret's game plan either to, like you said, prioritize the Magnus a bit more this game, or they just got tricked and VP put lanes that they didn't expect. And this but, is but if that happened, then them. Team Seeker still would have ro rotated their lanes. Like, you know, you're, you're not going to just sack your Ember saying, huh, well, I guess this is just the card with Delph. Yeah, I don't know. It's still it's still puzzling to me. I, I think they could have helped him more by just moving him straight away and just being like, okay, we're going to take that immediate lane loss of having to swap heroes around. And at the, as a bare minimum, VP would have to run after them if they wanted oh, to jump Oh, this down. is a nice opportunity right now for Team Secret. The Lions forward as Puppy charges in. Yap Soul's got the pick up and throw back, trying to kill off no one with the Fade Bolt. Not a lot of damage. In fact, it's Ace who's copping a lot with Solo, who came in with the Brain Tap. The Nightmare! They don't keep the damage going. Solo can just back up into the lineup of Team Secret, keeping that pressure. Thanks to the bonus armor, thanks to the control, no one survives. And Team Secret have denied that first blood. Fairy Fire, Raindrop, and Nightmare. And all three things were necessary to keep him alive. That was, that was the definition of clutch right there from Solo. Saw him TP in as late as possible. He was like, all right, I'm needed. I will move. This is important for Secret, though. It does free up their Ember a little bit. We're going to see it here. 40 HP, shot in the mid mid air from Rubik, gets Nightmared off. And it's probably tempting there for Bane to let the Nightmare run and get the deny. But he was worried that they were going to get the kill because it, it's a free trip to base for the for the Viper, so he could have just killed him off with the deny, and then he could have TP back to lane with full HP. But they didn't want to take the risk that Secret get the so. But yeah, this helps Ember. They force a rotation mid from Bane. It gives a bit of space to mid one, so now he's up to 10 CS in that bot lane to the 33 Avenge. He gets some levels. Absolutely crucial that they secure it somehow. And it's it's a start. It is a start, but. Damn, our Virtus Pro core is looking good at this laning stage. Yeah, they've they've got to be loving life. Fresh warning now coming out as we've hit that six-minute mark. Puppy 
able to move through the Radiant Jungle without being scouted, gets his own observed ward team just behind or to the side of that tier one tower in mid. So he knows when he can initiate onto no one. He's a full level ahead with Viper. Yeah. Actually more than a full level. It's 24 to 8 to the 32 for 13 in favor of the Viper. It's also that I think Puppy leached a bit of experience mid when he charged in, so this Viper has more or less got full oh, They're gonna go again, mid one even rotate. No one expects it. He really it. is playing the three position. The Syrian Chief is out, Flame Guard is still on cooldown. A quick Hadouken creep into the back lines. Yep, so it's gonna go down. Lil, well, he'll get a trade off. There's no one to claim the experience who is in range. But it's the mid from Virtus Pro that Team Secret I needed mid? to control. Puppy charging forward, Fada skewering him back. It's a nightmare for Bane as Yapsor picks him up, tosses him down. Puppy will find this kill. And they'll actually lose both heroes, Virtus Pro in the mid. Nobody expects the five man rotation with level four Ember off lane ganking mid. This is the this is like uh, the first three months of Korean Dota at the moment. Six yeah. minutes in for everyone there in mid. Uh, no one was not ready for that. I don't think it's fair to to expect of him to see that gank coming. The thing is, it's not... It's secret kind of neat, that, that stuff, but that was barely worth it. Like, that's the problem. They get two kills, it's great. One is a support, one is a big core, but it's two side lanes that are completely free farming for a minute and almost a minute and a half as secret have to retreat to their shrine, shrine up, and now get back to their lane positions. All in all, that was such a minor gain for the efforts that they put in. And this is a Pasha Sanking who's going to have like the fastest blink he's had in a long time because he's just having such a free time. He's gone for Tranquil, Soul Ring, Raindrop, and Wand, like the the mo highest value small items this hero can buy in the game. He has the top has net all of them. worth as well as the top CS. He is so even, super far. Like, even looking around, he does have a single killer assist to his name. He's still number one. Now he's going to try and change that one. They jump in oh, the skill nice from Vada, but he just dragged the epicenter with him. He almost burned the RP, but. That is not something he wanted to expend at that point. That was so good from Pasha. He realized he had enough time to cast Epicenter and just get into the skewer of Fata. If Fata skewers away, that's not a kill. But they timed it brilliantly with their rotation. And this should reward Virtus Pro with a tower top as well. Chen coming in with the army. Well, he's charging in, but he doesn't really have a play on the map right now with the Spirit Breaker. You can see that reaction as well coming from Bane. Puppy could not. He just called out the right time. It's the Observer Ward that's on top of the Shrine. These four wards from Virtus, from Virtus Pro, they see so much on the map. Stretching all the way down from the southern part of the lane, all the way up to the north. And now they want to go on farther. Start with the Brain Set, Pasha with a follow-up Burrow. Poppy needs to create a little bit of space, but with the Penitence, farther he gets the RP off. But really, what do you get from a Pasha? Just has to stand for a second going, hey guys, we did a good thing here. Now Burrow strikes himself away from Ace, who was doppelgangering in a couple of extra PLs, but... Not even using as a dispel, not even using to run away. It's Virtus Pro understanding the team secret came to defend a tower which cannot be defended. Puppy TP'd out, they TP'd in the mag so he shouldn't be able to connect again. Yaps are doing a good job here pulling the wave. They're actually buying as much time as Yaps they can. dead, I think. Bar is drive forward, Solo's gonna close the distance, and... No, he oh, he's actually fine, maybe. Oh, Pasha didn't try and body block. There was no mana for Telekinesis grab, so Pasha could have held him there a little bit longer. And would you look at that mid one Ember? Highest net worth for Team Secret as an offlaner in this game. He got a lot of space now from their place. He's still low level, but he's reaching a point now when he's actually able to fight. He's level seven at the very least, uh, has his remnants available, has a Ring of Aquila on the way. No one's not gonna let him sit here. This, this Get does, out of my lane. This does seem like the harder way to the end goal, right? Are you getting your farm over on mid one and now, like, Fada, he has level six, but he doesn't have a lot else to speak for. Like, his net worth is down to 2.5k. Yeah, the two deaths he just got were pretty costly. Mm -hmm. This bottom tower, Pasha's actually in position. I don't know if Seeker are going to expect this. They know RP is on cooldown. Pasha. Oh, and for in. Oh, my God! Just into the ultimate! And what? Randy's will keep him controlled with a stun. Mid one just trying to go for the blind. Hallelujah. I think, so mid one just wanted to create some safety. He wanted to scout them out and see, okay, is anybody waiting for me behind the tower? So he jumped in and that just completely overlapped with the channeling of Epicenter. Pasha was like, hell yeah, free kill, let's go. <laughs> and they got the kill together with Ramses. That's a big kill. Channel it and they will come. 
this field of Dota right now. Virtus Pro can keep the pressure up on bottom lane. In fact, they're going to smoke on Ramses and Solo, allowing for a wraparound. They have the aggressive Observer Ward, seeing Puppy and Fada moving over, and Puppy will be the primary target. Where's that stun? Magic Missile with all the negative armor. Puppy able to charge, creating space for mid one. Get the double searing chains. Ramses tries to swap a little bit further away. It will be in vain as no one under the shrine. They continue to fight Pasha with a double fire strike. It's buying more time for no one to inflict damage, but he's not bringing anyone near a critical level. Puppy already bailed out. Now they get that Fiend's Grip. It's over on the Expendable. It's over on Farda. And Team Seek will back up for the moment. Clutch charge from Puppy. He was fortunate to get that out in time. Yep, so it gets Sandstorm. It's important when you play Sanking in this game that you try to remember to Sandstorm after every Burrow Strike. If you slip up just once or twice, Yep, sorry, is perhaps the best player in the world at getting those spell steals off very quick on his fingers and um, Burrow Strike, one of the best steals in the game for Rubik. So, gotta be careful. Micro Alpha Wolf, please. Yeah, so we'll Fade Bolt steal it. It's not like mid one needs money. These levels look so good for me right now. The Viper of no one is once again being the centerpiece of their strategy. Last game it was the Sniper, this time it's the Viper. Um, with the Auras, last time it was the Vengeful plus Bloodlust. This time it's Vengeful plus Chen's Creeps. So. Now with that health talent too, he's really difficult to kill. Yeah, Vipers. A difficult hero for the Dire lineup to deal with until PL is farmed. They just don't have single target damage. Or a strike on the puppy. He can see the creep wave up on top, which is exactly what he charges towards and then cancels. Oh, wait, he canceled it too early. Yeah, I, I don't think he wanted to come that close towards the Vengeful Spirit. Now mid one has to help out. Uh, Forest Dry is going to be there. Spirit Committal. Mid one goes in again. He'll get the double searing chains, but Ramsey's is right hot on the tail. Only used one. Another defensive spirit out, and mid one will be okay. To get some space, he is really far away from blink. If he buys mana boots now, this is going to be the, such a late blink. I don't think he's going to do it though. I'll think again. He's coming to that side shop like he wants to. <laughs> <Aren't you good? laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty greedy for him in this position. If he went soul ring into mana boots before blink, uh, his team cannot wait that long. They're gonna need an RP, like you said. They just don't have the best heroes to do it with, but it's gonna be necessary. Uh, sure. Bane's trying to close the distance right now when he will Good do grip. so. Feed Scripts there. Kill. Here comes the support. Puppy charging in. Yamsaw is in the neighborhood and he's looking for that quick grab. And they've got the hold. The stolen Fiend Script. This is one of the oldest counters in the game. The Rubik versus the Bane. Your Fiend Script is not like a Witch Doctor where you can toggle your heal. It's a very simple steal for Yapsaw. Yeah, easy steal. But VP it's still, still a bane for a PL. Exactly. VP are going to feel happy about that. It's not just that one-for-one -one trade where they lose a support for PL. They got two TPs out, I think. At least, uh, I believe the Magnus TP'd into mid in that instance. And it frees up the top lane for Chen <laughs> to push out. But any hero gaining farm in this game is important. We've seen some Chens beat, like, number one net worth in games. And Lil is closing in on Midas. He will be scaling very well this game. Um, could be looking toward a timing push where they get something like pipe mech with that Midas, uh, or he can be looking for the Aghanims for some good auras and the split push potential. Uh, it's annoying for Ember to deal with. Ember's generally one of those great split push heroes, you know, where, oh, I always have to take care of my waves. Guess what one Black Dragon can do? Mm -hmm. Who would win? Black Ember Dragon Spirit versus or Ember? one Black Dragon neutral creep in split pushing. I think my money's on the Black Dragon. Black Dragon does pretty well, actually. It's not favored, but it, it does pretty well. He bouncing it around properly. The Dragon's is only good as this rider, right? Imagine if Chen could ride him. Oh, sick. Oh, stun. That is a very dead puppy. Yeah, maybe. Yamsel's coming over. No, 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 no. It's a dead puppy. This is the second Spirit Breaker game we've seen today where Spirit Breaker's just, like, super underleveled because he hasn't managed to find kills. Puppy is level four. This is minute 15. This is even worse than the Kuroki game where he got level 6, minute 17. If Puppy doesn't find any space, he will be almost worthless. That is that is pretty dangerous. This cannot go on like this. They have to There's the blink. in the game. 15 minutes is how long it took him. And they were really trying to have this earlier. This is why they gave him the top lane. Chen's going to take the siege creep. The star's going to Yeah. Team Secret need to fight. Like, they actually have to be ready to fight. They're getting a little bit of a trade-off. Ember Spirit's currently pushing in the top lane. You'll have All to jump right. back in a second, so... They don't know about the blink, though. This can be a really big play for Secret. It could be. Observer and Sentry is down. Puppy gonna do a quick D-board. Farda waiting for the moment. 
He can get both cores together. Poppy so worried. Okay, he's just gonna get a brain sap. Here comes the TPs in. Remember, they need to have those Impaler buff up heroes to pick up from from Yapsaw. Oh no! He dragged him away so far, didn't actually get the skewer. And now the pickup. Sent home on no one. He will be taking out this fight. Where is that RP? Now that he is gone, they need that control. Ramsey's TP, the Searing Chains will end up cancelling it. So Ramsey's as well as Pasha will fall. They were trying to force the issue. And the issue is just one from Team Secret. A quick charge? Nope, that's gonna be nowhere. That was some crucial miscommunication. He got instantly sent back from Chen, and then Sand King Blink stunned in. I think if they're on the same page there, either they just get out and lose nobody, or they take the fight with a great Blink two-man stun. Viper was fighting strong, he was ready to go. Uh, Rubik needed one more attack, and then Viper got TP'd away, and they kept <laughs> Rubik alive. I, I like how VP are trying to force the issue because they feel like they're on a timer, but I... That was a bit too early, in my opinion. Like, get the Roshan and then go again with Viper in the front lines, because if Secret have to spend the RP on just the Viper, they can probably dive the base and win the fight in there. And I don't see them killing him without, like, some fantastic Blink Skewer or RP play, and they even have Swap to counteract it, so... You might also just put it down. Actually, no, the sendback was done before they saw the Blink Dagger. So, yes. like, you could have said it, like, he's got Blink, let's just bail out and re and regather our yes. troops. But, but like even more then, right? Like if they if they send him back before they see the mag blink, when you send your strongest hero back to base, you don't stay and fight. Yeah, you don't. That's just Oof. mid one. A scouting Roshan. It's the second VP going. started doing it. Pasha, the charge is coming in. It was the diet sentry ward, which is down. So know exactly where he is. But Poppy will not commit. He got a six from that fight as well. This is really big for Secret. They got like 3k gold. They got the final, finally got the level six on Spirit Breaker. And now VP are like, all right, guys, that was too early. Let's do Roche. Yep. What if they have just done it in the opposite order? They're still getting it, though. I'm sorry. Would, would you like a little bit more comfort, Mr. Cat, in hindsight, in that armchair? <laughs> yeah. uh, I just no... feel like, you know, a team like VP, they should know better. I think that was just too greedy. Hey, at least it wasn't the Shrine fight again. So they hold their advantage of 3k ish. They do have the Aegis Immortal now. The downside for VP is Team Secret is starting to reach that point where the PL is going to get out of control. The Empower buff up is now number one on the net worth at 7.5k. Diffusal Blade is your primary thing you want to see out from him, and it just got completed. But it's the other thing which we were looking for from our earlier PL today. It's the life, it's the sustain, and Manta Style will help him have that. It's going to make it difficult for Ramses to control. And it's going to make it very fun for Nightmare to actually be a factor in the engagement too. He just wants to make as many illusions as possible, as fast as possible, because he's, yeah. he's playing against a lineup that can't kill them anyway. They don't even need to be that tanky. Just a Diffusal Manta destroys Viper. He has, like, no play against it. Sand King Epicenter will more or less be required. Charge is coming from Puppy. There's no one near Ramsey's. They can TP over. Puppy going to pull out of it. Really uncertain, because they have no vision of the Shrine area. MVP, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think about what the timing is now. Because they failed that push, they really lost a big timing where they could have taken Roche mid-tier 1 and 2 and then gone from there with almost a 10k lead. Now it's down to 2k. Items are coming out from Secret. Sure, you got an Aegis now, but if you don't make plays in the next 10 minutes, I think they're going to lose the game. This will help. They're under the clock. They got to go. Team Secret just smoked on top of that Radiant Observer Ward, so Ace looking to come forward. They charge down from Puppy, going in towards Pasha. A pick up an instant throw down because he gets bashed for the Nightmare from Solo. It changes off the target, and you can Burrow Strike away with Pasha, oh, leaving Ace, Ace what? all stranded. He wasn't ready to move out, but Lil's control was just too good. The Mud Golem was in the right spot. The Troll was right behind him, and now PL is down. Diffuser Blade will not be part of this fight because PL's dead. The Ace, hard truth. Ace was so far away from his team on that play, and he, I think he just got caught by Venge Stun and Swap and just got blown up. We didn't get to see it on camera there, but he died so fast. Ramses is in the rear. Good sentry. Yep. There you see him. And Man. Solo's just like, I know. I know everything. Give me that Mercedes. So now VP will get the 5k lead back that they just lost. And Fata doing the right thing here, probably just staying the hell away from mid. Getting the push out in bottom, forcing VP back, so... How much damage did they do to that bottom tier three in their first attempt? They got it down to two thirds, roughly. And Viper can start sieging it from a distance. The play that Secret will try to go for will definitely be Blink Skewer into the base. They don't want to Blink RP his first life because then I think they're going to lose the following fight. So they got to get the Blink Skewer and they got to counterplay the Venge swap. 
And if they get an extended fight where PL gets to make multiple illusions, it's starting to look really promising for them in the base. Mm -hmm. BP will be systematic, though. They will get the last tier two top, it looks like. And Fata, oh, oh he actually, yeah. they know he TP'd up here because he was bottom before. He has no way out of this. Yeah, it's on cooldown for the moment. He's got to blink or stay in here for 40 full seconds. That's a long time to wait. Either that or he just tries to creep skip it down and yeah, like no one just drew, behind. No one just drew a circle. He's like, Mag has to be out here. Fats is going to go daring to push the wave. Have Bane solo in pretty deep. Going to go for the Fiend's Grip and Yapsel's going to steal it. He doesn't want to use it, however. Wait for a real hero. You are going to have Puppy picked off in the mid lane. So a one for one trade off. Fada looking towards Lil or Lil looking towards Fada, however you want to think about it. He's still got six seconds left on that TP. And now the chance creep coming over as well. Wants to Whoa. try and cre creep skip this out, I Lil. Blink off. Can he get the solo? Close. No. Straight blink into the trees, and that centaur won't reach him. That was close. If he didn't get that blink off, that could have got scary. With any TP support and the centaur following after him to prevent him from TPing out, could have died there. But got away with it. Now Lil is 800 gold away from Ags, by the way. Just <laughs> want to point that out. This Chen is getting very farmed. Side casual, Statistically no. farmed. Only a thousand gold behind an Empower buffed up Ember Spirit. Sure. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. A decent day at the office. The the challenge for VP will still be to end the game. And Secret will just keep trying to look to split waves and get whatever farm they can. This is where Solo can play a key role. Because if he predicts the movement of the Ember Spirit when he's split pushing and gets a good Fiend script with any TP, they could get a kill. Or, alternatively, Ramsey's... Yep. No. Nope. Forces him away. Defensive Spirit's available. That's that's still good enough. That's actually a free tower. Then again, are all of the added towers are only free towers. Team Secret don't seem to be interested in defending any of them. It's all about the split push. The tier two tower and bottom lane is taking a lot of damage. Puppy is in a position where he can charge through the rear. And oh, Yamsaw with that blink grip. Puppy's going to chain in. You've got a lot of support coming in from Vernus Pro, but the RP is also available. They need that cleave fighter skewering away no one. So they do get a one for one. Actually, it's a one for two trade off. Magnus and SB go down for the kill onto Pasha. What does that Sanking have? You are so tanky. He has nothing. What? <laughs> Yo, what happened? He, he, was, made, he was like Fiend Script for five seconds. The Mag jumped in on him. He used RP. They used all of their stuff. And he still almost survived that. But a 10% magic resistance talent has okay. got to be it. He didn't even use one charges. <laughs> I'm just... Yeah, Solo. I know he's high they level. Found, yep, so they're going to try and yeah. take what was stolen back. So goodbye, Fiend Script. Yep, so is down. I think he had Viper Strike, actually. He stole that he in the middle of the, of the fight as well. I believe that might have been what killed off the Sanking on the final blow was the stolen Viper Strike. Good deward from Puppy. And, well, Secret, they managed to actually defend their top tier too by making that aggressive play bottom. So not all too bad. Two for one trade, they got a core. And, top of tower. and they got the tower themselves and got aggressive wards out. That was actually super nice from them. Accomplishing this in one move. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to do when you're this uh, pressured in the game. And, but behind. now they have to wait. Now they have to wait until they can actually have that RP back off cooldown. Because oh. that's the intimidation going high ground. We have the Agnes fully done over on the Chen, but we've got a 37 second window where VP shouldn't be fearing the damage, like the uh, the initiation from Team Seekers. So they go for the fight. Oh, just have a remnant out, really? One. There goes your first little attack, a quick skewer back, and mid one. Well, they did have one a long way away, but it still doesn't stop Pasha from having that last tick of damage. And the support that came in is lost. Puppy is gone. Fada's trying to run out of here. Nightmare from Yamsaw making this a little bit more difficult. Fada trying to get back up that hill. Doesn't have skewer. Blink in two, one. No, Ramsey gets the attack in. One extra one from him will do the job. That and team secret in trouble with three heroes down. That is such an uncharacteristic play for no one to be that far out without a defensive remnant and in such a position. He had time to react there, but didn't have a remnant available to jump to. At least I believe so. It didn't seem like he had one. And then he got gripped and got finished off. And no he, one has... He had one. He just reacted to it because yeah, he ended up jumping well. out to it a lot after the fight. Carry Chen with Medallion, killing him off with right clicks. This is starting to fall apart a bit for Secret now. But, yeah. But that that Ember Pro is just snowballed all of so it. Well. It's just... The reason it's a bit shocking to me is that I know this is a mistake plenty of Ember players make. Also some of the best Ember players, but it's just very rarely that I see mid one. He seems to be so good at always having that defensive play out when he's taking a risk. But this one time VP catch him off guard and they get 
massive value from that kill. That was a kill into a kill into another kill and a tier two. So that was like a 4k swing, just that one Ember kill ended up resulting in. Mm -hmm. And that's bad news for them. As now the waves are going to be pressured really hard with the okay. Chen Agonims. I still think he has his dragon, unless it got killed off. He's going to start just using that to push one wave at a time. A bit hard to see yeah. on the map. Uh, he has one moving toward him in mid. Is that a dragon? Some, okay, he's got an uh, Ancient Granite Golem, so it looks like they're planning the push. They're and gonna a get the. Lizard. Yeah. So, this Thunder Lizard is a really strong creep, in case you didn't know. It has some pretty cool abilities. If you wanna have a look at that. Pasha. They're coming in around the back. Ramsey sees so much, so Pasha is being initiated on at the moment, but the rest of Virtus Pro are coming in. They need to kill Pasha up right now. Able to do so. Fada, he's waiting with a Shadow Amulet. Ramsey's walked over the top of him. He'll go, now go into the middle of the fight with a BKB triggered. Secret, they just want to kite for the moment, but they still want this fight. They do not want to back up from at mid one. He's waiting for the right time. Ramsey's the BKB is gone. Sentry Water's down, and now's your time, but no, the lightning have bounced through. Fada, still not ready to actually blink in for that. RP, now he comes in. The RP will catch two. The cleave damage is high from Team Secret. Fada will fall, but no one. He's burned dry of mana. They're waiting to bring him down. The chain creep is trying to help out Puppy, creating space with a charge through. And it's no one on a triple kill, but Lil, the final man left, will be brought down. And Team Secret, patience is a virtue that will help them win this fight. Ace and Yamsaw, the last men standing for Team Secret to be the victors of it. And this is the exact sequence of events that they're going to need. They got a kill before the fight started on the Sand King, who is the big controller for Team BP. So it's a 5 on 4 already, and they get a 2 hero RP, and they have the Empowers running. And this was VP's choice to turn on the Ember, and they did get him here, but now they're starting to group up. They come in to contest Puppy, RP coming out on the 2 heroes, and Ace is just dealing the damage in this fight, running in. Negative armor from Yap, so I, I thought for a moment I thought he was getting VP... sent home. Oh, he got purged. They purged it with defusal. They must have. I thought for a moment that it was actually going to be VP's fight because that lightning, it was Mjolnir proc bounce from the Viper that cancelled the initial jump in from Fada. Yeah. He got a great chain lightning, but it's... It was still enough. The... VP hang around. If Sand King is alive there, they team wipe them. That's almost a disaster for Secret, but they obviously go in knowing that there's no Sand King. If Sand King had buyback and had something to TP on, it could also been scary, but they took a risk and it paid off big time for them. Now PL is back on top of the gold chart once again. Ember did have to pay his life, but the key hero of the game now is the Phantom Lancer. If he stays alive and gets kills, his next key item is... He's hot. hot is not that far away. We talked about survivability, but this is after he has his Manta style, so you're already yeah. creating illusions. You've got your seven defusal charges available. Well, Poppy being be stalled. This could be a fight for Fada, okay. Dust. Smoke broke. Yapsaw jumps in, triggers off the dust, but doesn't find the target he's looking for. They sentry instead. Paranoia reigns supreme for Team Secret. I think one of their smokes broke, so yep. Tried to find them. Oh, this is a good aggressive ward that Secret got down mid, though. They see this movement from VP. Yeah, but VP's got their own aggressive ward on the other side of the river. They only find the sentry with their own sentry. This ward is so good for Secret right now. They know where all the heroes are. Ace is bait. Ace is so bait. But then again, where's that follow-up? Vada runs in. It's got RP. Catching out too with the Fate Bolt reduced damage. Do they actually have enough to go to work? No one. Now he burns the BKB Ace. up. Ace has to get the hell out of here. Mid one will arrive, but the fight's already over. The Nightmare from Solo. Mid one wanted out. Pasha's is playing on the back lines, but mid one's the critical kill that no one's able to claim. And Vada, that control, the two-man RP was nice, but the damage just wasn't there from Secret. And now there's no PL for 55 seconds, no buyback available. Only the Ember has his, and he doesn't want to spend the money. I probably spend as well. He got sinking stunned. It feels like they're just trying to create some space here. Vada, okay, well that's too fast for you. They need Remnant Burst, or they need PL to be stronger when they get the RP off. I think PL didn't have his illusions Ooh, yet, and he was stunned by the Sand King in that fight. That's all. Wave oh. of terror to give vision. That's something. Now, yep, there's observers and sentries that will give that high ground vision for them. Buyback does come from the end, but the tier three tower cannot go down. If that tier three tower falls, it'll open up the shrines and Team Secret lose more control of their map. The blink skewer off the back of the telekinesis. No one's in so deep, but Pasha! Epicenter is right on the money! Yepsa will die at 
the sandstorm. He wasn't quick enough to save his Viper. The tower's still going down. The Chen Creeps are doing that work, but Solo and Pasha, they will fall as well. The Chen Creeps are retreating along with Lil. And now maybe with a Searing Chains, it's going to be four heroes from Virtus Pro punished going for these kills. Ace once more. He dust up. He actually triggered onto Ramsey's. He'll close the distance. Maybe he won't. The BKB's there from Ramsey's. Diffuser play is what was helping out with that one. Ramsey's a quick stop with a doppelganger dodge. Wonderful play from Ace. He'll keep the charge going with Puppy underneath the shrine. Don't give two hoots. Bring down the VS. All five from Virtus Pro fall. Team Secret not only hold their tier three tower, take the fight, but now they can move into the pit. That's cure. That's the exact thing that Secret need in their base. They had to blow the buyback of Ember, but the value of that was way, way, way too high. They got so many exit kills from their ability to just chase through. And BP, again, BP chose that fight. They could have sacrificed their Viper and got out, but they tried for the epicenter play and getting in getting in deep this into the This is taking a while. It really is. Oh, the climax. buyback's coming from the VS. All five players up from VP. RPS Roshan up. at 50%. A's getting bashed by Roshan. Doesn't help, but they find a target. It's Solo. They commit the nightmare. He dodges a spirit attack. Now Solo on the run. The charge is holding him in position. And Team Secret, man, they hate that guy. 45 seconds on his respawn could oh, give they get another one? Oh, they get a secondary? Oh, just got out of vision for the charge. Puppy can't see him now. As the observed warp that's on the hillside from Team Secret, just next to the shrine. That's what's giving him this extra information. Now Virtus Pro, they're still playing out underneath that Ace moves forward. Remember, he's got that Diffuser Blade, so he's looking to burn off the mana. Yatso with the pickup as she steals Viper Strike. No one. He gets the BKB up. Epicenter and the double Burrow Strike. Perfect hit. Mid one and Poppy just evaporating sand. Yamsaw needs to help out more. Fight against the RP up at eight. It's really all up to him. There's not a lot of mana to work with, but he needs that life. No one swapped up to try and create space as Chen sends him back and Pasha will finally put the last nail in Ace's coffin. Fada, he's buying back. They do not want to let Roshan be taken. Buy and again, they're what, also going to get their lanes back in control. Buyback for what? He has nobody to empower. There's nothing. He, he, I guess he feels like he has to start pushing out waves because yep. nobody else can do it. VP will immediately be pushing down mid to try to get racks, but... With Shockwave and Fade Bolt, they can at least kill the creep wave. They can but try they to can... kill the creeps, but there's no way they kill the heroes here. It's going to reach the tower anyway. So even if you do kill off the creep wave, the tower is toast. And yeah, I think the call came out from the rest of Secret, or at least from Puppy. Let the mid racks fall. VP aren't going to settle for this though. They want to get a secondary lane or Roche. They will get two objectives here of their choice. It can be a tier three or it can be retreating and taking off the shrine and then focusing on the Roshan. Charge is coming in. Charge that coming. shrine's still available at the moment. VP, they'll try and get rid of it. That charge very quickly cancelled by Puppy. He had to. He can't make. Yeah. Charge so early before his heroes respond, and they will take down the shrine before Ace can TP on with PL. So now PL has no way of getting into this fight. He has nothing to TP on. I believe he doesn't have boots of travel in his build. He does not. So VP will claim the Aegis and a full lane of Rex. If Secret get in too late for this and try to take the fight, they could flat out just lose the game right now. They're not going to be in time. There's no way. Well, they shockwave. It's, it's already too late. They don't even get past Counter where the tier two tower used to be. They come underneath the observer and sentry. Yamps or a quick blink away. The PL illusions will also time out. Oh, he's in the front lines. What is the Ember doing there? The Fiends grip control. Puppy charges forward, but he doesn't control Solo. And he was the main man holding down the core. No Ember for 70 seconds. Puppy will join him in the afterlife. 50 seconds on his clock. And now they can just go mid. Bottom lane's pushing in nicely. But hey, Black Dragon wins. So into the mid, we can go with the rest of Virtus Pro. And they will rotate towards the top. They're looking for that second lane of Rax. If only Secret had one more hero alive than these three, I think they would have somewhat of a chance at least here with Empower and a good RP, but there is no way they defend this lane of barracks. And VP will go for the jugular. They will go for the tier, uh, the third lane of barracks here. Oh, they do get one hero caught off here. That's a start yeah. for Secret. Viper Strike will make it difficult for Pasha to survive. Burrow Strike's up. They forced off him in really, Pasha. And the hand of God. They can't even get him farther. He's killing couriers in the back lines, but only at the Observer Wars. RP is available, but Solo and Ramsey's are very nicely split. In fact, Fada. Oh, oh. oh! Missed him by that much. That could be anything from that much to that much when you say it like that. It could have been a lot, but it was very little. Are we doing physical hand gestures now for the crowd? Yep. For a verbal thing? They actually... Okay, so Pasha being caught there in mid actually stopped their push. They go. had to... That much? That much. That much. So 
Yeah, so Pasha ended up getting caught in that mid lane, basically slowed down their push so much because they had to run in and help him that they didn't manage to make the rotation to bottom. And this is a bit of, ho of hope for Secret. That tier three would more than likely have fallen if he just stayed out of harm's way. But Secret played on whatever was presented to them at that moment. Mm -hmm. And now... Team Secret need a miracle, but they have RP with a lot of cleave damage, so up. miracles are available. And this, this is the point when usually this PL will just be out of control. He has what he needs, but his team is so far behind all of them that, you know, even a super fat PL will struggle to win this game. If any, if his teammates were just on par, this would be Secret's game by now. But they have been, they've been shut down so hard in the game that Ace will not be able to do it alone. They need a good RP and they need damage to come out from Ember. Ember can't die first again now. BP's coming in. Team Seeker smoked up. Need to dust quickly. Ramsey's stunning over on Poppy, so he'll be out this fight. The RP from Vada. It's nice on three. Feed script sold by Yapsaw. Here comes your bar throw from Pasha. Try to create more space. They're able to do so. Team Secret losing too many too quickly until Ace starts to create more of himself. If his team is dead, make a battle of the Clone Wars. But they'll be cleaned up. Epicenter does a great job at that. Team Secret, four down again, and this may be it. When you're two lanes of racks down, the BT aggressive push comes in straight down the mid. The classic, we just killed them, split up at farm. This is all of your pub games in a nutshell right there. Oh, we just killed their team. Let's totally not take objectives. Hey, man, it's, it's, the, it's the Artosis thing. When you're ahead, get further ahead. StarCraft 2, star, like farming style. But Virtus Pro, they know getting further ahead happens with Megas. So they're attacking into the tier three tower on bottom. SP's back up again, but with no Magnus, with no Ember, Team Secret. All they can do is just spam some illusions forward. Puppy and Yamsel trying to play this front line. and they Maybe with a fire strike, they can do it. Solo is low. The illusions from Ace doing a lot of work. Megas are still up from Virtus Pro. Ramsey's not a healthy man, but Ace can't really chase it. Pasha being forced off the round. Now the charge from Puppy comes in. Lil is sending him back. So they switch targets. They go towards the Chan. He will be the sacrificial mount. And Team Secret, they get something for it, but they've lost everything. Oh, just get out of there. Oh, wow. Yeah, he is. Started hitting the shrine. He could get dusted or sentry out, they don't but. Know. They they don't know. Oh, the sentry's there. <gasps> oh. Ramsey's can TP, but they know nothing. And he's up. Mega's 38 minutes in. You gotta say, if there's one. I've seen worse. If there's one word to, to just describe Virtus Pro in this tournament, it's. Aggression. They've played so aggressive. In this game, it was almost too much at one point. The first push bottom was really, really early mm -hmm. and did drop a little bit around the 20 minute mark, but they recovered nicely and they just don't give secret room to breathe. They're playing so quick and making all these aggressive moves work. That's why Carry Venge is like the perfect pick for this kind of team. Like if, if you play like this, that is when the hero is the most effective. And we're gonna see the breakdown here. The Phantom Lions are having farmed so many neutrals, but Venge is getting so much gold from mainly the buildings. Look at that gold difference. Secret haven't managed to take very much, whereas VP have taken shrines, three lane the racks. Yeah, they've basically taken everything Secret own. They it's, don't own it anymore. That's a fiction notice. The problem is Team Secret are still squatting on what is Virtus Pro's property. A Team Secret, they're looking to come out. They need some kind of quick pick. They need something that gives them some breathing room. And it looks like what that's what Ace is hoping for. He's got the heart. He's got the life. He just... Blinked in to get the last hit on the ward. And then he hit it. Didn't have enough damage. And the melee crew took it. Oh, whoops. Money lost. I think VP are having a great time right oh, now. That's a nice observer. What? <laughs> oh, well, there you go. No. So Secret need need a Hail Mary right now. Like they gotta push out top, try for a smoke or any aggressive play and just it's, get get in there. Maybe it's just bottom. Like it's the only exposed lane of racks. They will not get down there. They have to kill VP's heroes first. If they start pushing bottom, VP will just go for the throw. It's not impossible. That's what mid one's attempting to do, at least with his push. But there's too many heroes missing on the map. And when you have Megas, this is why Megas are so dangerous. You know, this well, type charge. of play. Okay. RP gonna go up to solo. No, he's not. No, he's not. Decisions poorly made. I was only pretending just a prank. So when you have Megas, even if the Ember Spirit pushes in this wave bottom all the way to the Radiant base, the next creep wave will push it all the way back by itself. You saw that. Mid one worked so hard to get it down there. 
and his rewards are almost nothing. He gets very limited gold, puts no pressure on the map because VP are just going to wait here until their Megas come back up, and then they're going to have full control over the map once again. Mm -hmm. And that wave clear is so piss poor from, from Team Secret. Like you Fae Bolt, you Shockwave, that doesn't do enough. Right now you need to have 50 aces in order to control the VP push just from the Megas. When we get stolen, oh, again, easiest thing to actually steal is Yapsol with the Viper Strike being initiated on defensive. He also throw up towards the end. He needs to actually get himself out of this one, but Yapsol, the damage is so high. The army is in, the upping is beautiful for oh. the epicenter. Pasha with a stun in the back lines again. Ace is perfectly controlled. Team Secret have lost everything, including the game, the whole tournament. Virtus Pro are your champions of ESL1 Hamburg. Finally, that title of major champions, they have claimed it. Uh, this team was just fully deserving of this. I think they were the best team this tournament. I don't think anyone would debate you on that. Such yeah, terrific won. play. They won the finals 2-0. They beat Liquid 2-1. They looked very convincing in their wins in that series. And in this series, they were just they just looked unstoppable. Secret had a couple of good moments, but it just wasn't enough. And Virtus Pro, like you said, finally a big title for them. Last time they got to the finals in the major against OG and lost in what probably in many ways should have been their game five. They lost that one. At TI, they got knocked out by the eventual champions. And this time they got revenge on everybody they wanted, more or less. <laughs> that they did. And this is going to send a wonderful message throughout the entire Dota 2 scene as well. CIS, strongest region in the world. <laughs> Maybe question mark, but either way, great thing for Virtus Pro, a well-deserved victory. I do want you to talk. So, what a series that was. It's been the most amazing tournament. I am new to the Dota world, but even I could see that was a dominating performance. Yeah, first thing I want to say, uh, I want to say thank you all who came today. We love you guys. We feel your support. Thank you. Uh, and of course, uh, I want to say I'm such proud of my teammates. They deserve it so much. I love you guys. He loves you guys. What a way to get you on side, and rightly so. This is it. You're a team that's been so close before to taking a major. You now have your hands on a major. This is it. What's the future for this team, this lineup? I uh, hope we'll win uh, all majors. <laughs> How strong can you be? Because you've looked like the best team through the entirety of ESO 1 Hamburg. Well, we prepared uh, for a long time for this tournament. We show all our best strategies, so we did our best. You did indeed do your best. I just want to ask you one more time. Now, people say that the question of how do you feel about this is a bad question, but I think it's always important to know. In front of all these people, people watching at home, knowing you're about to pick up that trophy, what does it feel like to know that you are major champions? That's a great feeling. Simple as that. Put your hands together for what has been.